Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to part two of my Books Beside My Bed video for this week. So as I mentioned in my previous video on Monday, which I will leave linked on the screen, this is my reading week from the 7th to the 13th of July. I read a total of 13 books. I read 3,896 pages and my yearly reading total is up to 192 books. This was the week that Twitter picked my TBR. And because I read so many books, I split this video into two parts. This entire part is going to focus on books from the Kate Daniels series by Alona Andrews. There are going to be spoilers because, I mean, the series is finished and I'm talking about books two to eight. So go into this video knowing that. I'm going to try and keep it relatively brief because, anyway, because I don't want this video to be hours long. The story behind how this little binge read happened in a week is when I put out a call on Twitter for people to pick coordinates on my Kindle to choose the books that I was going to read. Kirsty from Melbourne on my mind's coordinates were 24 6 so page 24 book 6 which happened to be Magic Burns by Alona Andrews and that's sort of like fate and she's entirely psychic because this is one of her favorite series and I originally started reading the first book Magic Bites I think last year because of her recommendation so it just seemed like yes I'll, I'll read this book and then I read it and then I fell down a rabbit hole and this is the result of it. Let's get started shall we? Brief overview for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Kate Daniels books. They're an urban fantasy series set in Atlanta in a world where there is magic and there's also technology but essentially the magic comes in waves and technology does not react well to magic and won't work when there is a magic wave. Likewise magic doesn't work when the technology is up. They have to find alternatives for when the magic hits and they can't actually use and access those things. So you have people who have cars but they also have horses. In this world there are also shapeshifters. In Atlanta the second biggest pack in North America is ruled by the Beast Lord Curran. You also have vampires who are controlled by masters of the dead. Basically vampires are empty shells of people who've been infected by a virus and they're cleared of everything and they're basically empty shells and they can be piloted by necromancers who can basically see through them and talk through them and perform actions that way. You've got all that. You've also got mercenaries who you help deal with magical occurrences. You also have the Order of the Knights of Merciful Aid who are sort of like the, the group of individuals who are charged with protecting humans at all cost. Kate Daniels is the main protagonist. She is a sassy, smart-mouthed, kick-ass female heroine. She starts off the series as a mercenary and she remains a mercenary through the whole thing. She also also goes through the process of working for the Order of the Knights of Merciful Aid and she also eventually becomes the mate of Curran the Beast Lord. That's sort of the world. All of these books were published I think between 2009 and 2014 by various publishers including Galance, Nyla, uh, Berkeley Press and Ace I think was the other one and depending on which edition on my Kindle I had it it varied with publication dates so they all were chronologically released sort of in that time period. Magic Burns is the second book I gave it five stars. In this one Kate has just started working for the Order of the Knights of Merciful Aid. She becomes involved in a case of two gods fighting for rebirth during a magic flare and when there's a magic flare it means there's a huge period of time where there is a lot of magic in the world and lots of things can happen. She becomes involved in this case when she meets a young street girl called Julie whose mother is missing and she asks for Kate's help in order to try and track her down and what she uncovers is sort of not quite what she expected and it becomes quite a quite a deadly situation that she finds herself in. There's lots of violence, lots of fighting, lots of death and gore and all that sort of stuff in these books. Book two introduces Julie who eventually becomes Kate's ward and also Andrea who becomes Kate's best friend. Andrea is just kick-ass. She's awesome with firearms and just awesome. I love her. Magic Strikes is book three and I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars. Kate becomes involved in an investigation of the Midnight Games which is sort of like an ultimate fighting competition for preternatural beings so if you have magic or if you're a shapeshifter or anything like that you can fight in these games and she becomes involved when Derek who is a werewolf becomes involved in the case and he's seriously injured and he is awesome he adores Kate and he doesn't ask for her help but she becomes involved anyway and this is where we start to get a lot more information about the shapeshifter community as Kate becomes more involved in their business we get to meet more of them and we spend more time with Jim and Derek and Karen and other members of this community. We also have the introduction of Hugh who is the warlord for Roland and Roland is a very ancient guy who has a long history of meddling in human affairs and he's also Kate's father and she's trained her whole life in order to kill him. Sorry that should have gone in the overview summary at the start. Oops. Anyway Hugh finding out that Kate is in 
Atlanta is not a good thing because she's not trying to publicize what her whereabouts to her father. So that becomes problematic and Hugh then begins to reappear in all the subsequent books. Magic Bleeds is book four. I gave this one 4.5 out of five stars as well. Trouble comes to Atlanta in the form of the City Eater, who is this very unstoppable force who essentially creates a whole lot of outbreaks of various magical diseases that threaten the community. Kate becomes involved in the investigation and then also uncovers that she may or may not be related to the City Eater. In this book, we begin the serious courtship between Curran and Kate, and it is hilarious. And we also get the introduction of Grendel, the attack poodle, who is awesome. He's a standard sized poodle and everyone can't believe that he's a poodle, but he's awesome. And I love him and I love any book that has a poodle in it because you know, my family has a poodle. Magic Slays is book five. I gave this one 4.5 out of five stars as well. This one I had to buy in physical copy because I couldn't get it on my Kindle. So I actually just ducked out to Dimmix because I actually had it and picked it up. That was fun because I got to tab it up. After the events of Magic Bleeds, she, Kate has left the Order of Merciful Knights and started her own business. But it's, it's very difficult because the order itself is trying to discredit her and people are very sort of afraid to work with someone who is so closely tied to the shapeshifter pack. The Master of the Dead, uh, Gastek, asks for Kate's help in controlling a loose vampire, which is very, very dangerous. It means the vampire is not being piloted by a navigator. When she does, she becomes involved in a case much bigger than herself and much bigger than the vampires and the packs because something is destroying control over magic. In this one, Kate is really adjusting to life living in the keep with the pack and with Curran. You get the introduction of a whole lot of new pack characters who we hadn't met before. And my favorite of them is Barabbas, who I just, I don't even know if I'm saying that right, but I just love him. And I would love more of him in any of the books. Book six is Magic Rises. I gave this one 4.5 out of five stars as well. In this one, Curran and Kate's presence are requested overseas by the European packs to help mediate a dispute between the birth of twin shapeshifters with different fathers. The mother of the twins, Desandra, is the daughter of a very prominent shapeshifter figure who is also quite unlikable because he uses his daughter in order to further his own line. And she has, is having twins and they, ha but, but they both have separate fathers. The child that is born first is going to become the heir to her father's empire and so they want someone neutral to mediate the dispute so they ask Curran. It turns out it's all a big giant trap and Hugh is behind all of it and it's a ploy to get Kate out of Atlanta. But they take a whole team of people along and this book was really fun because Desandra is hilarious and just this over-the-top character who I loved. Book seven is Magic Breaks and this one is really sort of the end of the first arc of the series so you'd almost if it was a tv show you would say this is like the end of the first season. I gave this one four stars. At the start of this book Curran goes away on a sort of diplomatic trip that he's been invited to and Kate is left in charge of the pack and as part of that she has to go to the conclave which is a meeting between the shapeshifters and the vampires to sort of keep the peace and manage the treaty and it's all go going well until Hugh walks in and dumps the body of a dead master of the dead. It's clear that the master of the dead has been killed by a shapeshifter. In doing so, Hugh basically ignites a war between the vampires and the shapeshifters on Roland's behalf. Without Curran there, Kate sort of has to navigate the politics of it all and deal with the situation. And then there's a whole lot of other things happen, including her being kidnapped towards the end. A lot of people online, when I was reading through reviews, didn't like this one so much because Curran wasn't in it. Controversial opinion. I like Curran, but I can take him or leave him. There are other characters in the book that I would wish I would see more of. So this was interesting to see how Kate deals with things on her own and how much she's come to rely on Curran as well and the safety of Pac and him. So this one was interesting from that perspective. Finally, I read book eight, which is Magic Shifts, which is sort of the start of the new arc. And in this book, Kate and Curran are adjusting to life outside of the pack because things happen between the last book in this one, they are now sort of living in the suburbs of Atlanta and learning how to deal with this change in their life and how it me what it means for them together as a, as a couple. They're also working together at Cutting Edge and the pack then offers Curran control over the Mercenaries Guild, which has sort of fallen into disrepair. So Kate and Curran decide to take on that challenge. Meanwhile, there is a very dark magic sort of rising. One of the pack has gone missing in relation to sort of this magical event and it takes a long time for them to sort of unravel what this ancient magic is because it's trying to seek more power and it's causing a lot of havoc in its wake. This one was really cool because you actually get to see a lot of the pack politics in detail because Kate and Curran have stepped away from the pack and they can't go to the keep for 90 days until the separation is complete. 
and anyone who wants to actually separate from the pack with them has a certain period of time to do that. So you sort of see where the lines are drawn and who makes that choice. And I was very, very happy with the people who made that choice. Not gonna lie, made my heart so happy. So those are the seven Kate Daniels books I read sort of in the last four days. I'm going to try and finish the series this week, hopefully, who knows, by the time this video goes up, I might be finished. And then I might read some of the novellas and some of the other bits and pieces that go along with the Kate Daniels world. I haven't decided yet, but I wanna try and get the main series finished before I go into the reading rush because I don't really wanna adjust that TBR because I need to get to, through some other books because this was a total unplanned derailment of my TBR as per usual. So yes, if you are a fan of the Kate Daniels series, let me know in the comments down below. I am thoroughly, thoroughly hooked. So thank you, Kirsty because um, yeah, we knew this was gonna happen. If you have any other recommendations for other urban fantasy book series, leave them in the comments below. They're my favorite thing to binge read, so leave them down below. As always, I hope that wherever you are in the world, you are having a wonderful day and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.